So tonight we got the new Everlast Cyclone 262 MIG welder here. We're going to run it through its paces. We're going to run both ends of the spectrum. Um, got a small project. Biggest issue I find with building these mini jet boats is getting moving them around in the shop. You know, they're not super heavy. They're just an awkward shape, awkward weight. So first project we're going to knock out is building a dolly out of eighth inch steel, uh, square tubing, and steel plate throw some casters on it so I can set the boats on the dolly, move them around from one spot to another super easy. Other one is we're going to crank it up and we're going to give it a run on some oil reservoirs um, which are quarter inch and half inch construction. So that way, you know, we're kind of putting it through its paces, both ends of the spectrum, already run a couple of coupons, super impressed with how it handles, but coupons are coupons so let's see what it can really do. I think just about every Everlast machine has the gas purge button. Uh, and then the other big thing is too, when you reload a new spool, you can hit the wire jog. So you're not having to stand there, pulling the trigger on your gun, crank up your inches per minute to feed it through. And down here, we've got the power set. Top starts at voltage, inches per minute. And as you scroll through, It gives you the parameters of where you want to be. And then if you go too far, like dropping your voltage, it highlights red to let you know you're in too low of a range for the material thickness you've selected. You drop down, and you can actually adjust your material thickness here. So right now we're at eighth inch. One click, we go to three sixteenths. Another click, quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths. So on the in inches per minute side, same thing toggle left and right. If you're dropping too low, it highlights red to let you know you're getting out of range for the power set. Too high, like too many inches per minute, same thing, highlights red. If you hit your select button down, it drops you to your wire diameter. So 045, 035, 030. So I got my rough assembly, you know, fixtured up. I got a table that I cut on the plasma myself, along with Koi Fab. Um, tap and slot style, super, super handy. I've also got my genuine speed squares, which they just help in setting everything up and making sure things are 90. If you don't have this, you know, don't have the table, you don't have the speed squares, don't worry, you can get away with just, you know, a plain steel top table and just a speed square. Um, so right now I'm just going to go through, tack it, check squareness, add a few more pieces and weld it out. But let's see how this baby runs. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to double up on my cradles just to give it a little more surface contact. Um, you know, just beefs it up, keeps everything a little, lot more stable. I'm actually going to use the outrigger legs that I cut as my spacers. Inch and a half tubing. Super easy, simple, quick way to do it. Just throw a quick little tack on there. Nice thing about this, the MiG-15 gun, you know, as a one-person project, you can hold something in place, the gun is light enough and has enough dexterity that you can still get where you need to be comfortably, so you can tack with one hand. So this is a really good example of where bigger isn't always better. Um, you know, I've got an inch and a half gap here, a bigger gun, I wouldn't be able to fit in here to get this weld on the back side of this cradle piece. So, I mean, it, it shows you how much 
dexterity and movement you have because it didn't have a big old bulky torch on it. Absolutely killing it. It's a beast of a machine. I love it. Get you one. <laughs> 